Okay, so we got a 2017 Chevy Silverado 1500. We're gonna do the front brakes today. Uh, you do have the option of um, just taking the, the uh, caliper off and replacing the pads. I don't recommend doing that just because if there's any warping in the uh, rotor, which you'll see when I pull mine off, there's a little bit, there's no metal to metal here. I'm at 57,000 miles, uh, which I'm shocked they lasted this long. But if there's any warping at all, it'll cause um, that trembling in your brake pedal and your steering when you're slowing down. So I always, re I always recommend if you've got enough room uh, on your rotor to have it uh, resurface to go ahead and do that. All right, so first things first, make sure you got your tires chalked to make sure you got your jack stands and I leave the jack under there as well, just in case. Uh, my driveway isn't uh, level, so I have to do it right in front of the driveway, which I'm not particularly enthused about on the asphalt, but here we go. Um, caliper bolt top and bottom, they're gonna be 19 millimeters. Okay, so here's what we got so far. Uh, 19 millimeter socket to take these two bolts loose. Also a rubber mallet because uh, they were a little seized on there. But um, don't forget, when you set this ratchet, set it to tighten as you normally would facing away from you because you're going backwards. So tighten, loosen's gonna be like that. Don't crank down on your bolts. But just these two, like that. Put them in a place where you're not gonna lose them. All right, so we're just gonna pry this off and don't worry about this clip right here. Always buy uh, your brake pads uh, with the hardware. And there we go. Don't let it hang by that hose, whatever you do. Let's just put it up top. It's nice and snug there. Sometimes I'll use a coat hanger and I'll just run the coat hanger through here and hang it on the spring, but uh, this is nice and steady. So we don't want that thing falling down and snapping this, uh, this brake line. So now what we got, we got our pads here, which we can take out. And I've, you know, I still got a good amount of pad on here. Uh, as you can see, uh, this rotor isn't warped. I got a good amount of pad on the inside as well. Uh, but the other side of, I got one that's a little uh, shy. So uh, it's time, it's 57,000 miles. I can't believe they've lasted this long. Save your pads, by the way, because you're going to need that inner pad to compress your caliper pistons when you go to put these back on. Okay, so I had to get this caliper out of the way because I'm going to have to whack on these bad boys with a uh, rubber mallet here for a minute. But like I said, you don't want to let that thing hang by the hose. So pro tip, coat hangers are good for everything. There you go. All right, after beating on these caliper bolts for several minutes, I'm sure my neighbors appreciated that sound, uh, they're starting to come free. Or the caliper mounting bracket bolts, I should say. Okay, another thing is uh, two different size bolts. The one that took the caliper off is a 19 millimeter. Uh, I know, millimeter, right? And then the one that takes the uh, caliper bracket off is an 18 millimeter. caliper bracket off and now if you can see it all you have is a t30 uh, bolt there which I'm going to take out and then this hub's going to come right off Oop, don't strip the bolt out do yourself that favor That thing is really soft metal too. Way to go, Chevrolet. Shit. Okay, let's see here. There we go. Luckily it wasn't over tightened, which I kind of thought it might be, but there we go. Don't lose it. And we got our caliper, fancy caliper hanger there. And this should just come right off. There we go. Careful not to drop it or crack it, which would only happen if you dropped it. Okay, so we got our rotors back. And do yourself a favor first, put it on backwards. 
and tighten it down, but just put it on backwards. Make sure you got some brake clean system, brake system cleaner, but uh, and go ahead and clean this thing off real quick. Make sure you get all the grease off it. Don't leave any like thin, greasy fingerprints on it, anything like that. And this stuff will evaporate real quick. Then just flip it over. And there we go. Make sure those holes line up. Yep, that's it. Come on now, there we go. Give it another shot. All nice and resurfaced. They, you know, they use a uh, a brake lathe. Um, that thing takes thousands of inches of steel off of this thing. It's diamond blade, diamond tipped. So, uh, unless you got a brake lathe, <laughs> unless you got a couple hundred thousand to, to buy one, uh, just take it by your nearest uh, O'Reilly Auto Parts, where I take everything, and uh, those guys will turn them for you. It took them about an hour to do both of them together. So, there we go. And this is one of the few, it's the only bolt that you don't need to torque. So don't torque this thing down. Um, it just needs to be hand tight with the, with the ratchet. Um, so yeah, that's that. Long thread on this thing. Get it up on there, there we go. And there, it's hand tight. Again, I wanna get all the fingerprints and stuff off. So you get another wipe down. You can't ever clean it too much. I'm going to tell you that right now. The other thing I did was I made sure that I labeled uh, my rotors right front, left front. So I don't know. I like things to go back exactly the way they came off. All right. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to have to compress the piston in the caliper back to its original position so we can fit the new pads in there. So we're just going to take an old pad, stick it in there, just like this, just like it was in there in the first place. Hopefully you can see this. Leave it hanging there. And we're going to use a C-clamp. To push these pistons back in. I mean, they make... They make things to compress the piston back in. This works just as fine. As long as you're putting the equal amount of pressure, like just make sure that C-clamp's right in the middle. Right there. And we're just gonna press it back in. You can see that. Yep. It's like that. Nice and easy. Remember, as you're pushing this in, you're pushing brake fluid back up to the master cylinder. So if you didn't look at the very beginning, I should have told you, if that master cylinder is completely full, you want to get yourself a turkey baster or something like that and uh, suck some of that uh, brake fluid out because you're going to be pushing, forcing stuff back up in. So uh, if that makes sense and you don't want to reuse that, you need to make sure you're using something super sanitary. You don't want any dirt in that brake line. Uh, if you have to crack a brake line, that's going to suck because now you're going to have to bleed the brakes down. And unless you got a lift, it sucks worse than taking these bolts out. So there you can see uh, we got it compressed. Rinse and repeat on the other side. Okay, so here's our new brake pads. Here's the old here. So... There's our new hardware. Like I said, always make sure you get new hardware. It doesn't cost you any more usually. So as you can see, here in a second, you've got two size brake pads. You got a big one and you got a small one. One's thicker than the other, one's wider than the other one. The one with the clip on it, I made this note, mental note to myself, is the one that goes on the back side of the rotor. So, here we go. We're going to take the old hardware off. Hopefully, pretty easily. 
We do it right here. There we go. And there we go. And they are both exactly the same as far as I can tell. So that's no biggie. The other thing you wanna always make sure is you're putting all your metal parts back together. Other than directly on the rotor or directly on the pads, you wanna make sure you're using uh, brake and caliper grease. That way uh, you don't seize these things up because this is all heat generated, that's all it is. Uh, and that metal against metal will seize those things up. So it'll make it a lot easier the next time you gotta take something apart. Pretty self-explanatory as to how they fit together. I mean, if you could do a puzzle for an eight-year-old, you got this. Okay, now you see that I'm gonna clip this back out and I'm gonna put that anti-seize stuff on here. These things aren't dirty at all. I'm gonna clean them off real quick. I'm spray down. By the way, the brake cleaning uh, substance, uh, brake cleaning chemical evaporates really fast. So it's a lot of alcohol, I'm sure. Nice and thick, there we go. I'm just gonna put it in there right where the metal is gonna sit. Don't get sloppy with it, but you kinda can't help but get sloppy with it. Now, when we go to put the pads on the clips, we're gonna put the some on the pads where they touch the clips as well. So, just like this. Get your clip in. There we go. We're in. Number one set in. Here we go again. Same thing. Rinse and repeat on this, left and right. So I'm only gonna show you the, the uh, passenger side because obviously it's exactly the same thing on the other side. Just like that, there we go. Now we're gonna put, duh, like this. We're gonna put the uh, caliper mounting bracket back on. Okay, so we're just gonna clean the brake pads out of the way. There's two bolts. Let's see here, now we go. We set one of these down like this. Coming right through the back. We're gonna start to thread it. And then we'll get the other one in. Make sure we got no grime, no grit on that bolt. Let me get my head up in here. Started. Okay, now remember, these are gonna have to be torqued down, so you're gonna have to have a torque wrench. I mean, I would not do it. Um, so, yeah, these things were so hard coming out, I had to use that half inch ratchet all the way out on them, and they're going in hand, hand easy now, as I like to call it. You know, <clears throat> doing this brake job takes me back to my <laughs> high school days, working at Quick Serve Auto Maintenance in Manassas. And my man, John White, was the brake mechanic over there, so he taught us a lot. My buddy Brian Nally, Brian, if you can see this, those are some of the most fun times ever. Uh, but Whitey, that was his nickname, and back then in the 80s, you could call somebody that and not get sued. Uh, everybody wasn't so butthurt over stuff, but um, Whitey was a good guy. Rest in peace, Whitey. Uh, you taught us a lot. Okay, so we got our handy-dandy torque wrench, and we're going to torque these bolts in the back, not the ones on the top, but the ones in the back to 170 foot-pounds. Okay, so these are your pads, inner, outer. I remember the inner one was the one with the clip and it went on the bottom. So we're gonna give it a little, uh, little brake grease just around here. And we're gonna put this back on without getting any grease on the rotor. Remember that. There 
there we go it sits right in there I got a little grease on the rotor there for my thumb that's why we're good with that brakes and grease do not <laughs> mix very well so just be careful okay and then this one just remember the half moon follows the rotor I've seen them before where somebody's put them on backwards or tried to put them on backwards. I don't even understand how that's possible, but I'm sure it can happen. There we go. Now, hopefully our rotor slides right in on top of that. Not hopefully, I mean, it's supposed to, so. Oop, hold on. Grease is not your friend. Let's do this. There we go. Grease is not your friend. All righty. So now we're gonna put the caliper back on. Hopefully very easily. Let's see here. Go. And there we go. So now we're gonna put the bolts back in. And hopefully they just thread right on in. Yeah, buddy. And we're torquing these to 74 foot-pounds. Give me one second here. That was it right there. That was it. Okay, so I'm gonna give it one last little uh, splash down shot of uh, brake cleaner, just to get us all nice and clean here, make sure there's no grease on there anywhere. Don't worry, that brake cleaner's fine, it's gonna evaporate. Uh, rinse and repeat on the other side. Uh, go up and check your master cylinder and make sure it's not too low or overflowing and add or suck out uh, any brake fluid as necessary, just remember, you got to use a sanitary uh, device to uh, siphon if you need to. All right, all done. Uh, all in, it probably took me about, uh, without having to break all those nuts off for the first time and waiting on uh, them to get my rotors turned. Uh, it was probably about an hour and 20 minutes, so not bad. All right, there's your brake job, rotors turned, pads replaced. Uh, hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give me a thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll have another video for you soon.